Continuing with our example, in part A, when we calculated the probability that John made exactly four free throws, we used the binomial formula to compute that probability of 2.32. There is another way we could have found this probability. We could use what's called the binomial probability table. You can find this table in your week 7 lesson folder. So let's take a look at how to compute that probability using the table. Now this is our probability, uh, binomial probability table. What we have here is a table of the answer to the binomial formula for different values of n, r, and p. So instead of calculating the formula by hand, if we look up our value of n, r, and p, this table will give us the answer to the formula without having to do the calculations. So in our example in part A, where we were computing the probability that John made exactly four free throws in the eight attempts, our n value is eight, our r value is four, and our p value is 0.6. Here's how I can use the table to find that probability. I start by looking up my n value in the leftmost column. So we can see here that the n is increasing from 2. And as I go down the pages, this table goes to an n of 20. So if I skim down to n is 8, this will be the section I want to look in. The next thing I want to look up is our r value, which in this problem is 4. So I look up the r value in the section where n is equal to 8. You can see here that the r value varies from 0 to 8 when n is 8. And if I looked in the n is 9 section, the r value would vary from 0 to 9, because n is our number of trials, while r is the number of successes. So I want to look up the r value of 4 in our n equals 8 section. And I'm going to make a note of this row right here. I'm going to go back up to the top of the table, which has these values up top, 0 0.01, 0 0.05, 0 0.10. These are our p-values. And for our problem, we're looking up a p-value of 0 0.60. So I find that value over here, and I will take note of this column. Now what I want to do is I want to match up the row where n is 8, r is 4 and go along this row to the column where p is 6, 0.6. You can see here when I match up that row and column, I get 0.232, which is exactly what our binomial formula calculated for us. Now this table can be very useful, especially for parts b, c, and d, which we will see now. Moving on to part b, I'm trying to find the probability that John makes at least seven free throws. So if I were to put that into our symbols for probability, I would be finding the probability that the number of successes is at least seven, which means it would be greater than or equal to seven. Now what does that mean in real terms? Well, if I'm finding the probability he makes at least seven free throws, that's equivalent to finding the probability that John makes exactly seven free throws or exactly eight free throws. And we learned prior that the probability of one thing or another can be found by adding those probabilities together. So what I would need to do is I would need to use the binomial formula for each of these two individual probabilities. I would need to find the probability that John made exactly seven out of eight free throws and also exactly 8 out of 8 free throws. I would have to use this formula in both cases. Using that formula can be a little tedious, so what I will do instead is I will use the table to look up the answer to the binomial formula for each of these values of r. Now in both cases I'm going to have an n value of 8 and a p value of 0.60. So the only thing that's going to vary is the r value. What's great about how this table is set up is that my n value is constant, 8. My p value is 0.6. That's constant. 
what I want to look up now is an R value of 7 and an R value of 8. Now those values are in successive rows right here. So if I go to N is 8, R is 7, and I scroll across to my P value of 0 0.60, I will find 0 0.090 as my probability. But at the same time, I would also want to find the probability when R is 8. All I have to do is go down, scroll down one row in the same column to find that P value probability value of 0 0.017. Going back to my question, I see here that the probability is 0 0.090 and 0 0.017. If you would like, you can use the binomial formula to confirm for yourself that these would be our values. When I add them together, I get a probability of 0 0.107 which is the probability that John makes at least seven free throws, or in other words, he makes exactly seven or exactly eight. Moving on to part C, we would like to find the probability he makes more than five free throws. Think of that wording for a second, more than five. If I'm talking about a discrete variable, in this case, the number of free throws John makes, Making more than 5, which would be r greater than 5, is equivalent to making 6 or more, which would be the probability r is greater than or equal to 6. I do not want to include the possibility that he makes exactly 5. I only want to include the possibilities where he makes more than 5. Since I have a discrete variable, this is simple to break down into individual probabilities, which in this case would be he makes exactly 6, or exactly 7, or exactly 8. Breaking those down, I can find the probability of each of them, again, using my binomial formula. But the shortcut would be to look up the answer to that formula on the table again. So going back to my table, I still have an n of 8 and a p-value of 0 0.60. But in this case, I'm looking up R values of 6, 7, and 8. So I will start with R is equal to 6 and scroll across to the column of P is 0 0.60. And I see here the probability he makes exactly 6 free throws would be 0 0.209. The probability he makes exactly 7 or exactly 8 are the same as before. So when I add up those three values right there, I will get the probability I desire. 0 0.209 plus 0 0.090 plus 0 0.017 gives me a probability of 0 0.316 or about 31.6%. That's the probability he makes more than five free throws. Moving on to the last part, we want to find the probability he makes no more than two free throws. Careful on the wording again. No more than two refers to a probability he makes less than or equal to two. So breaking that down, that would be equivalent to the probability he makes exactly zero free throws or exactly one or exactly two. Once again, I can use my table to find those probabilities. Heading back to my chart, n is eight. This time I'm looking up values for r is 0, 1, or 2. I will start with r is 0, scroll across to my probability, my p-value of 0 0.60, and I see that it is 0 0.001. And once again, the convenience of this table gives me the r, other r values of r is 1 and 2 in the rows that follow. So I can scroll down the table and find these three probability values and those are the probabilities I can add up to find the probability that he makes no more than two free throws.